February 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 35 and 36 from the Old Testament. Moses assembled the whole community of the Israelites and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. In six days work may be done, but on the seventh day there must be a holy day for you, a Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord. Anyone who does work on it will be put to death. You must not kindle a fire in any of your homes on the Sabbath day. Moses spoke to the whole community of the Israelites. This is the word that the Lord has commanded. Take an offering for the Lord. Let everyone who has a willing heart bring an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, fine leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, onyx stones, and other gems for mounting on the ephod and the breastpiece. Every skilled person among you is to come and make all that the Lord has commanded, the tabernacle with its tent, its covering, its clasp, its frames, its crossbars, its posts, and its bases, the ark with its poles, the atonement lid, and the special curtain that conceals it, the table with its poles and all its vessels, and the bread of the presence, the lampstand for the light and its accessories, its lamps, and the oil for the light, and the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense, the hanging for the door at the entrance of the tabernacle, the altar for the burnt offering with its bronze grating that is on it, its poles and all its utensils, the large basin and its pedestal, the hangings of the courtyard, its post and its bases, and the curtain for the gateway to the courtyard, tent pegs for the tabernacle and tent pegs for the courtyard and their ropes, the woven garments for serving in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons to minister as priest. So the whole community of the Israelites went out from the presence of Moses. Everyone whose heart stirred him to action, and everyone whose spirit was willing, came and brought the offering for the Lord, for the work of the tent of meeting, for all its service, and for the holy garments. They came, men and women alike, all who had willing hearts. They brought brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments, all kinds of gold jewelry, and everyone came who waved a wave offering of gold to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, or fine leather brought them. Everyone making an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord, and everyone who had acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. Every woman who was skilled spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women whose heart stirred them to action and who were skilled spun goat's hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted for the ephod and the breastpiece, and spices and olive oil for the light, for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. The Israelites brought a freewill offering to the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart was willing to bring materials for all the work that the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Moses said to the Israelites, See the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, with understanding, with knowledge, and in all kinds of work, to design artistic designs, to work in gold, in silver, and in bronze, and in cutting stones for their setting, and in cutting wood to do work in every artistic craft. And he has put it in his heart to teach, he, and Oholiab, son of Ahissamach, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as craftsmen, as designers, as embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and in fine linen, and as weavers. They are craftsmen in all the work and artistic designers. So Bezalel and Oholiab and every skilled person in whom the Lord had put skill and ability to know how to do all the work for the service of the sanctuary are to do the work according to all that the Lord has commanded. 
Moses summoned Bezalel and Aholiab and every skilled person in whom the Lord had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him to volunteer to do the work. And they received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to do the work for the service of the sanctuary, and they still continued to bring him a freewill offering each morning. So all the skilled people who were doing all the work on the sanctuary came from the work they were doing and told Moses, The people are bringing much more than is needed for the completion of the work which the Lord commanded us to do. Moses instructed them to take his message throughout the camp, saying, Let no man or woman do any more work for the offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing any more. Now the materials were more than enough for them to do all the work. All the skilled among those who were doing the work made the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twisted linen and blue and purple and scarlet. They were made with cherubim that were the work of an artistic designer. The length of one curtain was 42 feet, and the width of one curtain was 6 feet, the same size for each of the curtains. He joined five of the curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he joined to one another. He made loops of blue material along the edge of the end curtain in the first set. He did the same along the edge of the end curtain in the second set. He made 50 loops on the first curtain, and he made 50 loops on the end curtain that was in the second set, with the loops opposite one another. He made 50 gold clasps and joined the curtains together to one another with the clasps, so the tabernacle was a unit. He made curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. He made 11 curtains. The length of one curtain was 45 feet, and the width of one curtain was 6 feet, one size for all 11 curtains. He joined five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. He made 50 loops along the edge of the end curtain in the first set and 50 loops along the edge of the curtain that joined the second set. He made 50 bronze clasps to join the tent together so that it might be a unit. He made a covering for the tent out of ram skins dyed red and over that a covering of fine leather. He made the frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood as uprights. The length of each frame was 15 feet, the width of each frame was 2 and a quarter feet, with two projections per frame parallel one to another. He made all the frames of the tabernacle in this way. So he made frames for the tabernacle, 20 frames for the south side. He made 40 silver bases under the 20 frames, two bases under the first frame for its two projections and likewise two bases under the next frame for its two projections. And for the second side of the tabernacle, the north side, he made 20 frames. And there are 40 silver bases, two bases under the first frame and two bases under the next frame. And for the back of the tabernacle on the west, he made six frames. He made two frames for the corners of the tabernacle on the back. At the two corners, they were doubled at the lower end and finished together at the top in one ring. So he did for both. So there were eight frames and their silver bases, 16 bases, two bases under each frame. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the frames on the second side of the tabernacle and five bars for the frames of the tabernacle for the back side on the west. He made the middle bar to reach from end to end in the center of the frames. He overlaid the frames with gold and made the rings of gold to provide places for the bars, and he overlaid the bars with gold. He made the special curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine twisted linen. He made it with cherubim, the work of an artistic designer. He made for it four posts of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold, with gold hooks, and he cast them for them four silver bases. He made a hanging for the entrance of the tent of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer, and its five posts and their hooks. He overlaid their tops and their bands with gold, but their five bases were bronze. God, I love your stories of obedience. Maybe because I find it difficult sometimes to do that to be obedient. And these stories, like the one we're reading of Bezalel, 
and how obedient he was to your specifications inspire me and and lead me to realize that everyday common people can follow you and and that probably means I should and could <laughs> I just love hearing about Bezalel who was artistic he was a craftsperson uh, incredibly talented incredibly gifted but God I've worked on projects before and I've worked with a lot of artists and nobody respects anybody else. The architect can drop the plans, but the people building the house aren't really going to pay a whole lot of attention except for the basics parts. They're still going to change this and change this because the architect doesn't know what he's doing. And the person working on this is going to change something because so-and-so didn't know what they were doing. And at the end, the end result is always going to look different than the beginning vision of it. Yet it's really clear and very specific in the Bible, intentionally by you, that that's not what happened. Bezalel did this. He did this. He did this. He made this. He put this. He created this to your specifications. There's nothing in here where Bezalel said, gosh, I don't think this is working for me. I think this will work better. Or I like how this looks better. And I think about my own struggles day to day where I... <laughs> I arrogantly think I know better than you. I know I don't say that out loud too often, but that's what it comes down to when I have a fear of giving up control of something to you. That's truly what I mean. I honestly believe that I can do something better than you. Holy cow. Not sure why you don't just strike me dead sometimes. So today... I would really like to, not just today, for the rest of my life, I would really like to work on obedience. That when you show me your plan, and sometimes you're really loud about that plan, which is awesome, and sometimes you're really, really quiet about your plan, and I have to really, really pray and listen very, very hard, which is okay. I just ask for obedience, that it's 100%. It's not 83% with... 17% Janelle's way because she can't let go of control of that. Might as well be 100% Janelle's way. You always want what's best for me. How in the world do I keep forgetting that, God? I am totally laughing lately at, the, at how you've been answering me. You know I'm struggling giving up control over this one issue in my life. It's something that I want. Isn't that a horrid saying? I want. It's something that I want and have wanted for a very long time. Now it's within my reach. And I am so skittish over wanting this versus what you want, which may be the same thing and it may not be. But the real issue is I need to be okay with whatever you decide in my life whatever your will is what I should be agreeing to not trying to make some sort of agreement with you to have what I want so I'm not being very obedient right now I'm doing a lot of things for you and doing a lot of things right but that's not what you call us to do you don't call us to be 83% obedient you call us to be 100% obedient. And we fall short of that every single day. And for that, I ask for forgiveness. But can we start today and for the rest of my life working on being more intentional? I get that I will never be 100%. But it has got to be more than what I'm doing now, God. Please take away my arrogance. That I honestly think that I know better than you do. Because that has never been true any time in my life. And it never will be. All of the Bible verses that you keep putting in my life say the following. I'm, I'm quoting in Janelle terms. Um, Quit fussing. Trust me. I know what's best for you. Quit fussing. I know what's best for you. So today, God, we're going to work on the fussing part. I'm not sure why I want less than what you want to give me. I'm not sure why I think I know better than you do. 
Not sure why my kingdom at times is more important than yours. But I do know I want to be intentional and I'm working on it, God. So show me what obedience looks like. Not just 83% of the time, but show me what complete obedience looks like. Teach me how that feels. Help provide me the strength when I am too weak to make those choices. Show me those paths as you promised you will. And allow me to be obedient to you, God, for all that you've called me to do. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>